Hello everyone, I am Tina from Tina's Workshop and welcome to my imagination. Today um, we are going to do something with a New Zealand flax plant, not to be confused with a common flax plant. I happen to have some New Zealand flax that grows in our front yard and started looking into different ways that I could utilize the fiber from it. So let me take you along my journey. So this is what the common flax looks like that is usually um, made into linen. But the New Zealand flax looks more like this. This is what's actually growing in my front yard. And it grows very tall. It grows very fast. Um, it has these very tall um, flowers that come out on it. And the hummingbirds and stuff absolutely love them. They, uh, when they start, the flowers start actually blooming on this specific one. There's many different colors, but on this one, they're an orange flower. And the um, base of the plant is where all of the uh, leaves shoot out from. And when they shoot out, they come up very quickly and you can see how they're overhanging on the driveway and it, they need trimmed a lot and it's a lot of work to trim them but I'm like okay let's find some way to use them and I have made cording and stuff before um, but I decided this time to try and the last time I trimmed I had this huge massive pile of leaves and I thought oh maybe I'll try and weave a little basket now I have absolutely no idea what I am doing at all. I am just completely winging this. So here I'm just cleaning them all off to, you know, make sure they're clean. Huh. Anyway, um, the only thing videos I had ever really watched before was uh, in utilizing the fibers inside, um, similar to how you utilize the fibers that are in the common flax. Um, so I decided, okay, I've, I've cut these all to a, about the same length or so, and I'm taking the center hard, um, ribbing out and getting them all approximately the same width. I mean, you're, it's going to narrow at one point and stuff because it is a leaf and I'm just stripping these down, um, and here I'm showing you, just to give you an idea of how there's this whole leaf is just full of fibers. So you can actually take those fibers and strip them out and you can twist them together, spin them together and create twine just like this. So you can make rope cording and stuff with the fibers that are in it. So these have all been trimmed up and I am going to lay them out to start weaving. Again, remember, I have no idea what I'm doing. I am completely winging this. But I had seen um, a Jillian Eve video a while back and she'd gone to this fiber fair and she got this really cute little basket that has a spot where you put your spindle in it and then the fiber goes in the basket and you wear it you know, crossbody and you can walk around and spin. And I thought, oh, this is really cute, but I could not find anything like it online. So I have one that I actually had crocheted out of um, some fiber I had spun and it works, but I ran out of fiber. So my um, strap is not as long as I would have liked it and not as thick as I would have liked it. So I need to do something different with it. And it, it works for the most part, but it's not the prettiest of things. But this one I was hoping I could, you know, weave this little basket and be able to have, utilize it in this manner. So I'm going along and as I'm working it, I'm like, okay, this size seems about right for what I'm doing. And I have these little clips I use for sewing, and that's what I decide to use as I'm putting this thing together and finagling it the way I need it to go. 
after I made this and filmed this video, I started watching some videos on YouTube of other people that actually do weaving with the New Zealand flax. Um, it, in New Zealand, the they probably use, I would say they probably use this plant more for weaving than taking the fiber out and using the cordage, which they use that a lot too, but I think they probably, from what I can tell, use it more for the weaving. And so I started watching some of these different videos and I'm like, wow, okay, this is really kind of interesting. They um, strip the, like I was doing, strip the leaves down thinner and they actually will um, run a, like a blade or maybe a bone folder type of thing or something back and forth over these uh, leaves before they start weaving with any of them, which softens the whole thing up, which would have made this so much easier because if I bent one too far, I actually was creasing it. But if you had done this ahead of time, then you wouldn't have had these creases. So that would have worked really well. And some of the videos I've watched, they, they sit and they explain this whole process with the basket. And it's very different from what I have done here. And I think I really want to sit down the next time I trim this plant up and try to follow along with one of these other videos because I think it would be really neat to, to do it and do it properly. I mean, and as I work on it here, I'm like, oh, I really, I like this. I like how it looks. But, and I know that this plant tends to curl as it dries and I'm just hoping, okay, hopefully it won't curl up too much. Hopefully I won't have too much issue since it's already in this woven style. And I did have less issue, but there is still some. So you end up with gaps and things like that. And I will show you that. Um, and I think with the smaller pieces that they tend to use, you're probably getting less of the curl just because of the, how tight it is holding it in. <clears throat> so you can see I'm pushing it down, trying to make sure it's all good and tight. <laughs> And at this point, I'm really liking how this is coming out. So I'm just trying to finish off the top now and weave, fold over, and then weave back in those top pieces. But now I have a, a couple problems here. I have some that are too short and they won't weave back in. So I just took an extra piece that's a little bit of a shorter piece, wove it in and layered it over and then tuck it in here so that it creates a, I don't know what you would call it, but it secured it in, so it works. So now I wanted to have that spot where I could hang the spindle so on the side of the basket. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm making some loops and the loop needs to be big enough for the spindle and whatever yarn is being spun on it to fit in, but not so big that it's gonna fall all the way through. So I'm putting two little loops here and the bottom loop is going to be smaller because the spindle, you know, comes to a point. Even when the yarn's on there, it still, it comes down to a point and it's going to be small at the other end. So I'm going to put two in here. I'm trying to soften that loop too so it doesn't have a 
cold. And if I'd known how to soften it before, then that would have been a lot easier. So this spindle has some fiber on it, so I used that to make sure it was going to work and that I was getting those loops at about the right point. So now um, I, I want to be able to carry this, so I need some loops that I can put straps into it. So these are going to be my straps, but I want the straps to be strong that they're, you know, not going to easily break. So I used two leaf pieces together to just make that a little bit stronger right there. Honestly, with the, it's not going to have anything really heavy in it. One probably would have been fine, but I just wanted to make sure that it was going to be nice and strong. So I kind of, I put these in similar to how I had done my little fix on the other one, but leaving it up a little higher to create a loop. And it goes over where one has already gone, you know, been folded over at the top. And then I can run some sort of cording or something into this to create a strap. Honestly, I still don't know what I'm going to use for a strap yet. <laughs> Then I decided, well, there is going to be a spindle hanging in here, so these might need a little extra strength too. So I added a second leaf into here to just give it a little bit of extra strength. So now I had also made a little mat with the extra pieces I had just to see how it came out for the heck of it. So this is after it had dried and you can see where it's curling and the pieces were pulling apart. So I actually ended up um, putting some glue in um, underneath each one of these. Again, I didn't know what I was doing. It, they should have been folded over at the end and tucked in. That would have trapped everything in. but. Now I know. So, but you get the idea of how it curls, but it laid relatively flat considering. So now after it dried, this is the bag, and you can see down in the bottom where the leaves have curled a little bit. It really didn't do too bad, but there is some curling down in there. But in that same sense, there's shrinkage. So you can see all the gaps that are now apparent in the weave of this. And the fact that there was shrinkage where areas were overlapped that I thought was good and overlapped, they were not so good and overlapped. So I have um, areas that are now no longer woven in. So it's kind of hard to see down in that dark little space. But you can see down in there where there's bits that are sticking, kind of sticking out. And this one here is now no longer tucked in. And there is some other spots right here that are just barely caught. So any movement within this bag would just push these all out. So I had to think of some way to fix this and uh, yeah, and the strap pieces there are loose. So I ended up taking some more um, pieces of leaf and going over the spots that um, were no longer overlapped. And then I also took some 
alpaca yarn and tied in some places too and tied in the side straps so you can see where they overlap right here and on this side here there's where I put another one over the top so it is hopefully holding in that other piece now because now it's going to be dried in that shape so it shouldn't move anywhere it should you know create enough and the only thing that's going to end up being inside of this is some fiber wool or whatever so it's you know not going to be anything that's going to really be pushing at it so you can see where i've added the extra little pieces in there so it's it's all hooked in now so i'm much happier with it that it's <laughs> the pieces are all together it's not the most beautiful thing but it will work i still need to figure out like i said what i'm going to use for the strap on it but it holds my spindle and it holds my fiber so it does what i i wanted it to do and i think i will attempt to follow a youtube video and try and do one that's a little bit more proper i guess you could say so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did click like and if you'd like to see more click subscribe if you'd like to be notified when I upload videos, then click the notify and we'll see you again soon. Bye.